welcome back to the first video of 2022 on my channel Auto Social UK. Now in today's video we're going to be starting as we mean to go on, driving one of the fastest sports utility vehicles that money can buy. Okay, it's not quite the Lamborghini Urus, I haven't quite reached those standards, but it is just 0.2 of a second slower and it's the Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a closer look at this amazing Italian car. I'm going to be telling you everything you need to know and giving you my thoughts and opinions. So if that sounds good, then please make sure you keep watching. And if you like new car reviews and car content, then hit that subscribe button. OK, let's take a closer look. The Quadrifoglio stands out from the other Stelvio models thanks to its flared wheel arches, wide 20-inch alloy wheels and performance orientated touches like the carbon fibre bonnet, Pirelli P0 tyres and big brakes. The result is a car that has a menacing presence, something backed up very nicely by a rather loud exhaust. on the Giulia Quadrifoglio, Alpha's hot SUV benefits from using the same chassis and same fire-breathing 2.9-litre bi-turbo V6 engine, which produces 503 brake horsepower and an eye-watering top speed of 176 miles per hour, while the four-wheel drive system is borrowed from its sister company, Maserati. For 2021, the Stelvio Quadrifoglio actually had a few subtle changes and you'll have to look really closely to recognise them, but they're all very welcomed and add to an already fantastic design. Something that hasn't changed is those fantastic 21-inch alloy wheels in the five-spoke circular design that are instantly recognisable as Alfa Romeo. You can actually now change the brake calipers to be a few different colours. We've got them finished in the fantastic yellow, you can have them in red, or you can even have them in a more subtle black or grey. You can also upgrade these brakes. If you've got money to burn, for around £8,000 you can opt for those brakes to be wrapped in carbon ceramics by Brembo, saving 17 kilograms. But realistically, the standard brakes are more than sufficient. Coming around to the front of the car and love it or hate it, but this is where it stands aside from all the other boring SUVs on the road because it's so instantly Italian, so aggressive but quirky. You've got that fantastic V-styled Alfa Romeo grille, which actually for 2021 has changed slightly. You've now got a darker detailing. You've also got the number plate off to the side, how could you miss that? You've got the signature Alfa Romeo LED lights and then onto the bonnet you've got these fantastic aggressive bonnet vents. Around to the back of the car and it's not quite as quirky as the front but of course there's one thing which you're going to instantly recognise and that's those massive rear quad tailpipes and the nice thing about Alfa is there's no fake going on, you haven't got any of the fake tailpipes all the surrounds that you get in some of the offending Audis. It's all real here. You've also got some new rear smoked lights and the badging which is finished in a black. It gets an electric tailgate as standard. However, it's quite leisurely. It takes its time. Inside this boot, you'll find 525 litres of space which seems pretty standard against its competition. It's larger than the Porsche Macans, but it can't quite match the BMW X3 competition. Space in the back of the Stelvio, again, is good, but it's not particularly class leading. However, there's no real complaints from me. It's nice and comfortable. I've got plenty of headroom. I've also got plenty of leg space, despite this seat being pretty far back. My only main complaint is the fact of no rear climate control dials. You'd think in a car that's nearly £75,000 that that's something you'd expect as standard. However, you do have a couple of USB charging ports and you do have a centre armrest with a couple of cup holders. Inside the Stelvio Quadrifoglio and all materials used feel really high quality and also the specification is pretty decent. However, I do think it could be better and it's not particularly class leading. But let's talk about the materials used first. You've got a really nice soft supple leather on the dashboard. We've actually had the upgraded green and white contrasting stitching which does just add that little bit of extra detail. You've got carbon across the dashboard with some 
unbrushed aluminium and you've also got some really nice feeling physical climate control dials. Everything feels really good quality. In fact, that's something that Alfa Romeo actually tried to improve on on the new upgraded 2021 year. And that came with a few different additions to the dash area, including a leather wrapped gear stick. You've got the addition of the Italian flag and they also made just some of the buttons and controls feel much better weighted. The standard sport seats are soft and supportive, with a nice touch of the Alfa Romeo badge etched into them. Electric and memory seats are also standard. One of the main complaints from the previous generation car was the lack of physical touchscreen, and that meant that setting up things like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto was rather tricky. Well, the good news is the new car does feature a touchscreen, and that makes simple things like setting up the Apple CarPlay much easier. But you still have the physical controls, which means that you can use the central scroller when you're driving along, and using this is far less distracting. The screen features new customisable menus which work well, but it's still not the most cutting edge system around. Those graphics might have improved, but the BMW X3 or Jaguar F-Pace both outperform the Stelvio in this department by a fairly big margin. One of the real highlights of the Alfa Romeo has got to be this fantastic steering wheel. Ours has been upgraded, so it's even nicer, and that adds some Alcantara and also the carbon insight. But overall, it's a great steering wheel. You've got highlights like the button that's lifted straight out of the Ferraris and instantly make you want to press it. You've also got these really heavy, massive gear shift paddles, which are actually static as well. So when you turn the wheel, they're always in the same position. The Stelvio Quadrifoglio is four-wheel drive, however, it is rear-wheel bias. And that means that most of the time in normal driving, it's sending 100% power to the rear wheels, which will be fantastic news for most keen drivers. However, because of that clever four-wheel drive system, if you pop your foot down and it starts to feel the car slightly slip, you'll feel that it can send up to 50% of the power up to the front wheels, meaning that you're in full control all of the time. And this means that the Stelvio Quadrifoglio gets a pretty impressive 0-62 time of just 3.8 seconds. And as I mentioned, that's just 0.2 off of the Lamborghini Urus. This thing is fast. It has that DNA, that Italian Ferrari DNA running through its bones. And you know what? You can really tell. So what I am going to do is I'm just going to quickly unplug my mic so that you can fully appreciate the sound of this car and we're going to do a quick pull off and well you're going to hear what it's like. Let's go. really is quite addictive and as you can see I've got a big smile on my face all of the time. The only real way to get that sound out is to have it in race which of course then does turn off all your traction control so perhaps a little bit dangerous but for a little bit of fun when it's dry it really is brilliant and I'm not actually one for using the kind of manual paddles very often. I don't tend to do it, but it just feels so important with this car. If you want to get the best out of it, then you're going to be wanting to use those manual paddles. But it's not all about outright power. Yes, okay, this car has it running through its DNA, but actually it's pretty good at being an everyday car as well. That suspension is pretty pliable, pop it into advanced efficiency and then suddenly it becomes much softer and it starts to soak up a lot of the bumps in the road. It's never going to be as soft and plushy as some of the other SUVs but it's definitely a lot more livable. It's also got absolutely pin sharp handling. Now this is a big car and you do feel its presence on the road. However, as soon as you're throwing it into corners, 
It could be a hot hatch. It feels like something like a Golf R. There is little to no body roll. And actually, compared to other cars on the market, this is reasonably light. And that has a lot to do with the fact that a lot of the panels are carbon fiber. So it's a lot lighter than something like a Porsche Cayenne. So let's talk about, oh God. Well, I wasn't gonna talk about that, but let's talk about that now. Sometimes when the start stop system kicks in, this car is really slow to start back up again. Just then I was at traffic lights and actually it was a bit of a panic as there was something coming. Now that's one little gripe about it. And I do feel that a lot of people dislike start stop systems for this very reason. So I probably would go ahead and turn it off. So let's talk about price and added extras. Now the Stelvio Quadrifoglio starts at just under 75,000 pounds quite a lot of money. Now this car has the upgraded Harman Kardon sound system, which is around 950 pounds, but I do feel is essential, especially if you do a lot of driving. This has also got the advanced safety systems, which is things like your adaptive cruise control, your traffic assist, your lane assist. Yeah, all things that you think would be standard on a 75,000 pound car. And because it isn't standard, and I do think things like that are essential, we're hiking up closer to the 80,000. Then you've got the green and white stitching. You've also got the upgraded steering wheel. All of these things do add up and they are things that you want to put on your car to make it special, especially this carbon fiber steering wheel. I really feel like this is essential for making this car stand out. So when we actually start to look a little closer at the performance SUVs, which are actually worthy of taking on the Stelvio Quadrifoglio in performance figures, then we're looking at much more expensive cars. The Lamborghini Urus, you're also looking at the Audi RS Q8. All of these cars are coming in at over £100,000 and suddenly the Alfa Romeo looks pretty good value for money. So, so far my thoughts have been overwhelmingly positive, but is there anything I don't like about the Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio? Other than the fact that that is an absolute mouthful. Well, yeah, there are a few complaints about this car. The first being when you lock it and unlock it, it makes a really loud beeping sound. You know, one like the Mercedes, and it makes everyone look around like, hi, I've got an Alfa Romeo. And as far as I can tell, I can't turn that off. Now the other thing is the driving modes and the lack of customization. So there's four driving modes. You've got an advanced efficiency, a normal mode, you've also got a dynamic mode and a race mode. Now to hear that great sounding exhaust, you have to have it in race mode, but then it turns off your traction control completely. And it's also really, really rough. Now it'd be lovely to be able to have a chance to kind of mix up those different functions. I'd love to have a soft suspension, a loud exhaust, and actually have some traction control so I'm not gonna kill myself. There is so much to love about this car. With every twist and turn, you realize just how capable it is and how fun it is for an SUV. You've got that fantastic driver engagement, but you've also got the reassurance of the all wheel drive system. Altogether, it equals a fantastic car, which is enjoyable, but also extremely practical. But let me know, would it be the performance SUV you would choose or would you go for one of its rivals? If so, let me know which one. If you've enjoyed this video today, please go ahead and give it a massive thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos from me like this, then hit the subscribe button. Until next time, see you later.